previously on. That's it, Jason. You got it. This is it. One go. minute to go. Last minute. Guys, let's go. There you go, Ebony. Tighten up those dishes, guys. Make sure everything's perfect. Beautiful sauce, Dino. Baby doll. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Here we go, Jason. Oh, what is that? Losing touches. Let's go. It's gonna be soggy. Eight, Fuck all of that. Six, six, five, four, three, two, one. one. Stop. That one I'm happy about. She looks like a fuck right, out of fucking Shrek. Time for the moment of truth. Time to taste. Thanks, Your entrees. All three of you. Follow us. It's gorgeous, kid. Well done, all three of you. Now, it's time to taste your entrees. I think we should begin with Jason. Chef Aron. Please step no, forward. No, no, no. I'm really hoping they start with him because his soup bullshit, right? If they waited any more longer, this would be so soggy, be like a wet diaper, dude. That the entree Fuck round is much better for me than the appetizer round. I've taken a big risk by really going out of the box and trying something original and unique Look, and it's creative. It's bathing in the fucking I'm swamp. That my gamble Fuck pays off, off in the entree. Jason, please describe the dish. I've created for you a tofu skin wrapped black cod with bay scallops, maitake mushrooms, and a cucumber pea tendril sauce. This is like I come back to MasterChef, but I'm landing on another planet like Mars, because I don't even know how to categorize this. Maybe I'm channeling Dino a little bit. Maybe you're channeling Dino. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Jason, I'm intrigued by this entree. I think my biggest question for you is, what purpose does your broth sauce serve in the dish? So. Traditionally, at a Chinese meal, you might have lots of different entrees, and I love to have pea stems. But instead of giving you like a mess of tangled stems, I decided to concentrate that flavor of that pea shoot in with the cucumber and present it in a slightly different format, just to play with the textures there. Jason, the tofu skin wrapped black cod. Have you seen this in a restaurant menu anywhere in the world? No, I have not. So you chose this form to be experimental? Yes, Jeff. Well, I gotta say, this dish it's dynamite it's delicious talk about a cadillac fish it's cooked just the way it should be the maitake mushrooms are meaty they're well caramelized i think the choices of scallops counteracting a very dense rich cod the idea of something delicate and soft and bringing a piece of massachusetts to the plate makes a lot of sense and i appreciate that thank you really okay jason i think it's fantastic Thank you. The tofu wrapper totally works. It gives it texture and chewiness. It almost feels like I'm eating like a pasta dish, you know? It's kind of <laughs> like has a noodle sensibility to it when eaten with the cod. And I think this is a fantastic dish. So much gordo. Very, very impressive. Thank you. I don't think you like it. Jason, you took a really big risk tonight with your entree. And I am so glad you did because I love it. Thank I think you. it 100% paid off. I think that the tofu skin is different, and I like that. I do think that it retains the moisture of the black cod in a really beautiful, delicate way. It is absolutely a Jason dish, and it's incredibly successful. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Jason, I said months ago that you have the technical skill of a professional chef, but tonight you really confused me. Yeah! You wrap an amazing piece of cod in tofu skin. You get yeah. it crispy, you season it perfectly, and then you sit it in a bath of green water. Wrapping it once, I think, was a smart thing to do. Rolling it two and a half, three times. It's so dangerous, because once you've got that crispy skin on the outside, underneath it just steams. I've got this beautiful color, beautifully done. Color, color, color. Then underneath that layer, I've got this sort of synthetic texture. And then underneath the third layer oh. is even more gooey. You know, the actual fish is cooked beautifully. Yeah, that's the hero, right? It's what you've served it in that disappoints me. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, let's go. Let's go. It is the finale. There's no hero. It has to all, everything needs to be a hero. Next up, Dino. It's not a mystery box Please, or whatever. Step forward. Fruity, colorful, meaty, Italian. This is definitely me a million percent on a plate. The one thing I'm worried about is the cook of the lamb. There's a lot on the lime. It's got to be juicy. It's got to be pink. A perfect mid -rare. If that lamb is not oh, cooked God. to perfection, that could be curtains for me. Dude, he cooked it, Dino, deep fried it, and then he seared it on the fucking pan. We have a uh, rack of lamb on a lamb belly and sancho carbonata with a big and cipollini balsamic glaze. All right, Dino, so let's get real here. I'm going to cut right through the middle of this. Oh, no. And if it's not an even pink, you take one giant step backwards. I called it, I called it, I called it, call it this fucking, this editor. All right, Dino, let's get real here. I'm gonna cut right through the middle of this. And if it's not an even pink, you take one giant step backwards. Pink. It's perfect, but it's, it's beautiful. Dino. It's a masterpiece. Lamb. It's on my dynamite. Plate is a perfect medium there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Textbook. <sighs> Dino, getting the first one right could be a fluke. Mailing four could be genius. It's an even more perfect medium rare than his. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Let's see what I've got. A perfect medium rare. And Gordos is fucking bleeding and still mewing. Absolutely spot on. Thank you, Chef. Wow. I'm mewing, isn't that when it goes meh? Dino. Yes, chef. I dig it. Excellent cook on the lamb. You caramelize the outside. Well, not perfect. I, unfortunately, have a huge big cap of fat right here, which is a little disappointing. Oh, who The cares? flavor and the balance that you were able to achieve by cooking it evenly in two pans and also in the oven really rendered something that's very deep in flavor. Thank you, chef. So, um... From the dishes I've tasted from you so far, you have an amazing ability to bridge old world Italian flavors with new style restaurant presentation and technique. The braised lamb caponata is as brilliant as the cook on the lamb. Are there errors in this plate? Yeah. As I knew it was gonna be too sweet, it needs more acidity. You should have crossed the lamb. All things that a chef like you that works for me, we fix in two minutes. Because you have the most fundamental thing of all, which is an inherent talent to cook. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Easy. I'm impressed by the cook on this. I like the play of sunchokes. You have this really intensely flavored caponata below that is really delicious, but a little bit more salt would help the lamb rack on top, be the star and cut through a bit more, short of some seasoning. There's just the right amount of edge to it. There's just the right amount of Tino in it. Nice job. Thank you, Chef. Okay. Tino, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you've nailed the lamb. Let's get that right. The bad news is you've used the wrong garnish for the Rolls Royce of lamb, it needs to be soft, creamy textures, acidity, a sunchoke puree beautifully done. I go into the figs, it's like fig jam. It's Aww, sticky, it's overjuiced. It's bitter. Look, my glass is gone, because mm. I'm washing my palate down, and you know, you cook the lamb beautifully, but the garnish and what you've dressed it up with, it's the wrong coat, young man. Thank you, chef. Ebony, please step forward. It's it's I'm fun. very proud of my Chill. entree. It's Only a rustic one judge. style down home dish. I put my heart on the plate, and I know that all my flavors are there, and they taste good cohesively. This is my bounce back from the appetizer. For every setback, there's a greater comeback, mm -hmm. and your girl brought it today. 
Mm -hmm. Please describe the dish. Sure. We got me a spiced honey glazed duck breast with sweet potato mash, sauteed collard greens, crispy heirloom carrots with some crispy mm -hmm. duck skin. It smells lemony and zesty and spicy and everything a duck should. But let's make one thing clear, Ebony. Every chef tonight would run a mile from having to cook duck in a finale because it's the most difficult protein to pull off. I'm curious how long you seared your duck breast for. I did it about 90% skin side down. I saw it start to crisp, and then I flipped it and put it in the oven. So I would say about between six and eight minutes. And that kind of looks perfect then. Oh, wait, it, it's, it's, that's what raw. What do you think, Evan? That's raw. I think it's rare. You're right. No, that, that is, that is a raw. Oh, brother. It's got feathers on. My duck here. It's Beautiful. it's clucking, but glistening, perfect, medium eh? rare. But for me, it's the fragrance from this that I love. It's got the spice, it's got the sweetness with the honey, puree, amazing, and that little slither of crispy duck scratches on top. <laughs> I mean, this thing here, okay. amazing. Ebony, my duck is undercooked. Yeah, but I Martin. have to say. The bitterness, the acidity, the brightness of that carrot top vinaigrette, it's exactly the flavor that you want. That sweet that, potato. That, I, I love her chat, but this is not a good take. Uh, guys, 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 guys. The whole point, the whole point, and the difficulty of a duck, it's how hard it is to cook and nail. The fact that she's failing it, just say it. Say Gosh, it. I'm digging so, it. You failed the it's duck rich, technique. Has a bit of that thing is, it, is fucking quack. Aside from the cook on it's the duck still quacking. Rest, everything else on this plate is incredibly delicious. Thank you, chef. I totally, totally agree. And you know what? Pin it. Your greens are perfection. The carrot top is brilliant. And you are literally 90 seconds away from a three-star dish. And um, I'm gonna finish it right here. What? Cracklins? Amazing. What the fuck? Ebony, let me tell you, I live in the South and I eat collard greens all the time. And these are the best that I've what ever had. What the? So just... Guys, I'm disappointed. I'm just gonna pause one last time, chat. Guys, guys, old Joe would bin this. Now he's finishing the cook for the cook. Fuck you. Something about this dish Where's that is Joe? so exotic. That spice, once it starts to mingle with that honey glaze, it is just unbelievable. All right, Ebony. Got a little bit of sear. Perfect duck. You were one blighter away from a perfect dish. Just a lighter. Thank you, chefs. All right, Jason, Ebony, Dino, please head back into the kitchen and get ready to cook for the very last time. Thank you, chef. Thank you, chef. Guys, I'm just head chat. Dino, now at six points. Wow, what a night. And Bonnie, Guys, four. We're two courses in. They've all had highs Jason, and lows. Jason, two but nobody has perfected every course yet. 90 seconds is all I needed. But everything on your dish was delicious. I mean, that's how you cook. Everybody's yeah. dessert gotta be perfect. Everybody had a flaw, so I it know. is what it is. It's down to the desserts. All right. If the best is three, and second one is two, and one is one, that, I think that's what I'm gonna According to their, to their analysis. Jason, Ebony and Dino, this, is one very close race. And this final course is the most important 60 minutes of your entire culinary lives. And it starts now. And no spoilers, but I think, I think it's, it's between Dino and Ebony. If Dino flops here and Ebony pops off, win. It all comes down to this final wow factor. Can they use this dessert to get their hands on that incredible trophy? Come on, Jason, A finish fucking strong. dessert, man. Today's dessert is a creation of my own making. Oh, it's no. the black sesame Japanese with yuzu chocolate mousse in a shiso berry coulis. Oh, what? If I can execute all the different technical components, I can produce a dessert that could be a showstopper that could nab me the title. No, just stop. <laughs> I am making a chocolate orbit cake with a chocolate rum glaze. 
macadamia nut crumble and a passion fruit key lime coulis. I came into this competition winning my white apron with a dessert, and I'm going to win the MasterChef trophy with a dessert. Woo! I'm going. I'm making a roasted pistachio tiramisu cake with yeah. orange mascarpone cream, a pistachio twill, and special caviar. It's going to be something they've uh, never seen. A uh, what? Cake. This is the finale, babies. So you got to make sure it's damn Brother. good. Brother. Let's go. Can they use this dessert to get their hands on that incredible trophy? Right, Dino. Yes, chef. Final hurdle. How are you feeling? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. This one is actually for uh, for my mother. Uh, my mother's favorite dessert is tiramisu. Anytime we went to a restaurant, that was the dessert she ordered. But what's the Dino spin? Because the reality is, we've all had tiramisu a million times over. Flavor's the way I'm gonna elevate this one. I will be doing yeah. a roasted pistachio tiramisu with an orange mascarpone cream and espresso caviar. I just feel like you don't fuck with tiramisu caviar. that much, though. It's a little tricky. You do it with gelatin. You drop it into cold vegetable oil, and it boils up. Now you're worrying me, Dino. And, Mum, are you aware of espresso caviar? Yes, it's delicious. Dad, has he got nuts or what? He's always got nuts. He's always got nuts, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what? Right, so, Dino, <laughs> just over 40 minutes to nail it. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Dude, the, the flavor elevator went out of business for this. Come on, man. Beautiful, Jason. All right, Ebony, this is it. So tell me about the dessert. I'm going to do a chocolate orbit cake with a chocolate rum glaze, macadamia crumble, and a passion fruit tool. Wow, OK. Now, it took you a little bit of time to get that together. Was that on purpose? I want to make sure the batter wasn't overworked or underworked. So the batter not right, when you pull them out, they will like souffle. You got them in the oven already? Yeah, they're in the oven. You're certainly up against it now. Any time to pull through, it'll be with this dessert. Stick with it, you got it. Yes, chef. Halfway on the last course, guys. Have me stay focused. Right, Jason, what's the dish? I will be presenting you a black sesame Japanese oh, with a what? chocolate yuzu mousse. And what's that there? Um, this is the berry coulis. I'm just chilling it and I'm going to blitz it with the shiso leaves to keep that freshness. We're so close to announcing America's next master chef. Japanese means Where's Japanese Jason? and French. Before I started the competition, he said you're right. Lost my Japanese. passion for cooking a little bit. So. Really? It doesn't taste like that. You know, stuff happens. Life kind of takes you in different directions. And just for me to be here in the Master Chef kitchen, I really appreciate being here and finding that. Is he crying? Love you, I really appreciate being here and finding that spark again. And um, to have you guys motivating me, um, I'm just so, so thrilled and so grateful. We're glad you got the Yo, spark back. Shut up and this cook, is anybody's soy game boy. Right now, young man. You have got what just 22 fuck? minutes yes, to nail it. Good luck. Cook the fucking plate, motherfucker! Now, Joe, wait to hear about Dino's tiramisu. Not only is he making his lady's fingers, but he's coming up with a finish of an espresso caviar. A little bit more like mo that. molecular than I thought Dino would dare to go tonight. Get it, Dino. I hope he doesn't go too far out with this, Dan. That's it. How's Ebony looking? Ebony is making orbit cake with passion fruit. She has a little bit of twill going on there. But, guys, Ebony's cakes aren't coming out as quick as you think. She has no margin for error. She might be plating those with 30 seconds left. And they're all trolling it. Oh, I see what he's doing it. Now, with Jason, he's essentially making a very, very high-end sandwich cookie. But the big Japanese for Jason tonight is sandwiching those macaroons together with that mousse in the center that's going to ooze out the size. <laughs> We're coming down to the last and the most important five minutes of your country what live. Is that? Let's go! <laughs> yeah, babe, it's all yeah. right. Again! <laughs> Third time, same clip, same reaction. For my it's like my own stream. I my duck about 90 seconds too early and it was undercooked. So I let my cakes cook an extra six and a half minutes. So now we're down to the wire. He goes, Ebony. I wouldn't touch those when they're so hot. Yeah, the baby. Goes. No. There's Jeez. no more time to let it cook. There's no more batter to rebake. This cake 
has to be perfect. Well, if Ebony touches those cakes too much, they could just collapse on her. Let's see if this one comes out. Uh, I think it is going to come out. This is my moment of truth. Come on, Ebony. Dude, I'm trying to watch the images, yo. Oh, here goes Ebony's chocolate cakes. Let's see if this one comes out. Uh, I think it is going to come out. There he goes. Yeah, Those look good. Now I have to get the cakes on a plate, but I can't rush it because then I'll mess them up. Two minutes remaining, guys. So I have to take my time. Wait, you know. Start plating. Beautiful, Jason. Oh, that's Dino's that orange, orange marsala. That's awfully heavy, isn't it? Oh, it looks good. Dude. Chat. Isn't Ladies that and gentlemen, a bowl for Master Hall? Come on. Go, Dino. Here we are. Ebony is not going to have enough time to get the cake. Oh, whatever it's called. Come on, Ebony, let's go. She barely have enough time to get the cake on. Come on, boss. Come on, Ebony. What is the other dessert in a bowl? What oh, is it? Get on the plate. Oh, come on. 30 seconds to go. Get your twill. Ebony gonna get everything on a that plate. Panic, Come on, Mom, you got this. Go. What is that? Oh, baby, so. Oh my God. Let's get this final tasting done and let's find out who is going to seal the deal and become America's next Master Chef. What More is that on? Please Dude, bring what? those incredible desserts inside the Master Chef restaurant. Let's go. It's all kind of garbage. Don't get mad at me. You know what? You know it's true. And now on to desserts. Please step forward, Dino. This dessert is an homage to my mother. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. So many emotions are going through my mind right now. This is probably the oh, worst no. I've ever freaked oh, no. out in the inside. She knows. He's, you know, my mother's lived he's pulling the ult. I think it's my time to finally take care of her. He's cry serving it. He's cry serving it. Is a roasted pistachio tiramisu That's broken. cake with an orange mascarpone cream, a orange glaze, the espresso caviar, and a pistachio twill. So pistachio and orange are kind of like the two left field flavors. Um, that way you, you sort of have a different flavor that you're not really used to with a tiramisu. <laughs> I know tiramisu, there's never really texture, there's never really something else. I wanted to give you something that- That looks pretty good. I'm not sure quite what to say about this. Oh, classic. It is the most non-traditional tiramisu in texture, consistency, taste, conception. What you baked are not lady fingers. They're more like gorilla paws. So if you put gorilla paws in a tiramisu, what do you call it? <laughs> gorilla paws. <laughs> it almost kind of reminds me of a carrot cake. I was going to say exactly the same. The biscuit so thick, it's like a cake in the middle. It's a carrot cake, like a really good one. Do you know? You know what it tastes like to me? It tastes like a tres leches cake, like a sponge cake that's been soaked with three milks. I just love the creaminess of the mascarpone. The floral nature the of the pistachio working with orange is what's making this so interesting. This is really off kilter, very much like yourself, but it's just delicious. Thank you, chef. Yeah, Dino, it is. it's bloody delicious, yes, but it it's is. not a tiramisu. There's insufficient espresso in there, and the, the sponge is way too nutty. And this thing here? A tiramisu, a pina cotta souffle, I don't give a fuck what it is. If it's good, it's good, it's fuck up, man. It doesn't need a shard of glass on top. You, you're getting too clever there. But it's quirky. It's weirdly delicious. Tiramisu is not. Did it pick me up? Yes, it did. Thank you, Sean. Shit, man. The pistachio pairs well with the orange, 
but I think your application of pistachio is really weighing down the dessert itself. I disagree with Gordon. I like the sugar tweel on top because it adds a little bit of sweetness where it's otherwise quite savory. I love the idea of the espresso caviar. I just don't love the execution of it. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Wow. Okay. It tastes like character. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> Make or take it. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. All right, baby. Pick your head up. Next up, please. Ebony. <sighs> My dessert has to be spot on. I mean, it usually takes three hours to make a Orbit like cake. Uh, I did it in I'm 60 minutes. About it. If this Orbit cake is perfect, I think I'm skating. Right to my trope. Okay, Ebony, baby. Please describe your dessert. I made a chocolate Orbit cake with a chocolate rum glaze dusted with gold, homemade macadamia crumble with a passion fruit macadamia twill and a little passion fruit coulis. So it's a flourless chocolate cake, but not a molten lava cake. It's more of a moussey type texture, fudgy, like when you get in the inside. So when I slice down into this chocolate cake, I'm looking for an even glossy glaze throughout. I should see a nice set center consistent all the way through. That will tell me that you have a chocolate cake that could be worth $250,000. See how you did. Ooh, it looks sumptuous and rich. Oh, oh my god. Oh, she's old, dude. She's taking a note out of Vino's book. She's doing it. Wait a minute. Ebony, when I slice down into this chocolate cake, I should see a nice set center consistent all the way through. Hold up. See how you did. Oh my God, Ebony. Look at it. I mean, Ebony, it looks like chocolate mousse in the what center. It's steamed perfectly. There are a book. few small books. holes, but overall, it's a pretty consistent My favorite, my favorite book is the one with no words in it, the one with the images. Oh. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. It's rich, it's heavy. Is it nasty? It's, it's oh. incredible. <laughs> it's perfectly baked. That macadamia crumble, you should just make and jar and sell. <laughs> Dark rum in the glaze gives it a depth. Classic, Ebony, yeah. I have never doubted you since day one. She should have made it and harder. this cake is the perfect ending to an incredible journey. I don't want to cry, y'all gonna make me cry. <laughs> it's unstoppable. Nice she job. She could have made it much harder. She's just bad at it. She went, she Ebony, went, I know you probably haven't fallen in love with my charm it's, tonight. <laughs> I'm just scared yeah, of you. It's perfect. Scared of me? Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. I bet my match. <laughs> I would say that really, I'm no match for you because I could never make a chocolate cake as delicious as this. Oh my God, thank you. The glaze is fantastic. The contrast of the crumble is perfection. Shit. The passion fruit is the perfect little edge to it. A really world-class dessert. Good job. The cake itself, delicious. Macadamia, I love that. But, but there's one element of this cake that I think is too excessive. You put cocoa powder and cheap corn syrup glaze on top. Huh? And that, for me, has taken away the subtle and beautiful nuances of that cake. Ebony, uh, young lady, you know, tough night, but your timing yeah? is spot on. Is it what? Because you've just given us a wow factor of a dessert. <laughs> Three star Michelin and pastry chefs strive to get that balance between the sweety, salty, crunchy, textured. And then that airbrushing thing, you know, only you would do. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you, chefs. Thank you, Joe. Nice job. And finally, Jason. I feel that my dessert is the best execution of all my three dishes so far. It's like I said, no, he, he's, he's already lost. It Come has the flavor, it has the texture, it has the presentation. I'm so excited for the judges to brother, finally taste brother, something that I feel 100% just... proud of. Okay. My dessert for you this evening is a just black sesame out. Japanese with a chocolate yuzu mousse and a blackberry blueberry shiso kuli. 
You know, Jason, visually, you never cease to amaze me. It's a work of art. Thank you. Question. Yes, it sir. looks like cement. How do I eat this thing? Do I pick it up with my hands and bite? I mean, however you want to eat it, um, that's perfectly up to you. It's just up, up. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, watch and learn. Mario technique. Oh. Dip on the side, some of the sauce. Boom. Impressive, Joe. That worked. Yeah, impressive, Joe. Jason, you know, I said it months ago. You're like this encyclopedia that just keeps on adding chapter after chapter, week after week. Chocolate mousse is fabulous. I mean, you've got a touch of magic there. The yuzu just lifts it up with something really exciting because it's zesty and vibrant. I would have made the sandwich a bit lighter. OK. The garnish is exceptional. The crunch of that crudo cacao nib, breathtaking. You've mm -hmm. nailed it, young man. I would prefer a uh, frozen Oreo cream sandwich you buy in the store. But I but. agree with Gordon. I think what makes this dessert so special is actually the chocolate yuzu mousse. It, along with the shiso, the berries, the flowers that you have on the plate are the stunning. Same. But I think in this dessert, the focus is all about the chocolate and the yuzu. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever. What do I know? Yeah, I, I'm taken back by how all those very assertive, strong flavors like shiso, yuzu, are working in such a harmonious way. And this dessert is not overly sweet. People don't refer to desserts as being well-seasoned. This is a well-seasoned dessert. Thank you very much. It's tart, acidic, sweet, chewy, nutty, crunchy. We have a great nod to Asian cuisine, along Six with the great souls. sweet sensibility of just a delicious dessert. Good job. Thank you. Wow, Dina, Ebony, Jason, it's been an incredible journey. The next time we see you, we will be crowning one of you America's next master chef. Wait, is it? Right now, we need some valuable time. Please, head back into the kitchen with your heads held up high. Wow. I mean, come on, seriously. All three of them really brought their A-game. For sure. We now have to pick one winner. So, Ebony's appetizer, <laughs> pan seared scallops with that charred romanesco, and then that delicious pea that puree. I mean, the dish looked stunning. What I enjoyed the most was the refined nature of the pea puree. It was herbaceous, perfumed lovely with that Meyer lemon. But she was 60 seconds away yeah. from nailing those scallops. Now, That's a lot, for her entree, she gave us the spiced honey glazed duck breast, sweet potato mash, also carrot made top it. vinaigrette, and those fried thumbelina carrots on top. The collard greens were delicious. Yeah. Carrot top vinaigrette, beautiful. The fragrance of the duck was amazing. The problem was the cook on the duck. Yes, the duck breast was undercooked, but man, what a dish of food. And quite frankly, when I tasted that duck cooked properly, it might have been the best dish of the night. I thought Ebony's chocolate cake is the one that sealed the deal. Dynamite. This thing was airbrushed at the end with a bit of gold dust. It was rich, delicious, and that incredible macadamia crust was spectacular. You know, all credit to her for a military wife cooking at home for the kids. She came in with nowhere near that finesse. The journey for this girl has been exceptional. I stuck to what's true to me, what I traditionally do in my household with my family and my kids. And I took all the things that I learned here during my Master Chef journey, and I just married them together. And that's what makes my menu Master Chef trophy worthy. The appetizer of Kim. the year was Dino's. Absolutely. It's not Absolutely. easy to make squidding pasta, to no cook way. it Didn't properly, ever. to make a beautiful clam, squid, ragu. He nailed every single element of it. It had opinion, it was bold, it wasn't afraid, it was 100% spot yep. on. And you follow that up with that rack of lamb that was paired with sun chokes, lamb belly, and that balsamic vinegar running throughout that dish. The actual hero, he nailed beautifully. However, the fig jam was way too sweet. No. Oh. And the caponata wasn't a caponata. Putting Joe, the braised lamb belly in makes it very untraditional. But I think in this case, it really works. Yeah, and he's That's Italian. Really he knows better. I got to say, I Joe, love he's a, he's, Dino's he's a, he, appetizer and entree, but I really didn't love the execution of his dessert. It wasn't a classic tiramisu, but making your own lady's fingers, that amazing soak, and then the orange liqueur, beautifully done. It was Dino in a goldfish bowl. Can I say something about Dino? The caponata might not have been a caponata. The tiramisu might not have been a tiramisu. But I saw a glimpse of almost genius, I think, today. He cooks like my mother. Really? Yes. He cooks from the heart. I think a lot of people underestimated me at the start of this competition.
but I've really matured a lot since I've been here. I made my hey, own yo. orthodox twist to a classic Italian. And I gave my mother something to be proud of, which gave me something to be proud of. His mother's right, amazing. Chase started off with that incredible sea urchin, custard, topped with prawns, clams, and my lemon vinaigrette. It was elegant, but you can't eat all that custard. But from a flavor standpoint, the prawn was delicious. I thought that that salmon roe was nice. For me, I just absolutely loved the flavor and the balance of uni, how it really sort That's of a, That was lame. Let's custard. be honest, and that was lame. Entree, they had that so lame. tofu skin wrapped black cod, very complex. He got carried away with doing something different and new. I quite like Jason's entree. I thought the cod was cooked beautifully. I loved that ginger scallion That's sauce. You need his an lame. entree that this kitchen has to. never seen. Did that was prepared oh, Tony, I'll take, Tony, I'll take. You have to Chill out. Swamp take. Shrek with an motherfucker. Go back to the swamp and eat your fucking sauce. bullshit. We're not full on a cleansing of program. He is Fuck you, man. A global trend. Yes. Oh, stop it. The guy's willing to take a next step, take a risk. We got to reward that here because we're sending a message to all of America of what food is in the world. And this is important stuff. I think for me, what was the most memorable was that chocolate yuzu mousse. The combination of citrus and chocolate, then using it with something as aggressive as shiso. We took all those very assertive, strong flavors and made them harmonious. The fragrance of the berries and the coolie underneath, beautiful. This guy cooks from the heart, and it means so much to him. I think that's a very special and unique talent when you can kind of put that much emotion into your food. And I really got to know him a little bit from eating those food dishes. All My menu all the, full of all is It's not from a, a recipe book. Blizzy. It's not from something I saw online. I went out of the box trying something original and unique and creative, showing my heritage as a Chinese-American first generation. I'm hoping that my gamble pays off. For me, tonight's winner is based on the journey from coming in, battling for an apron, to presenting their menu, their inspiration, and their soul left on that plate. That's Do we all agree? I'm convinced. Yeah. Let's go and tell them. Convinced of what? OK, good, good timing. Those who can't do teach. I've always wanted to show my students that if you go after your dreams, you can accomplish them. So what's at stake for me is at the core of who I am as a teacher. It's not that I want it, it's that I need it. And I need it because I had a baby at 16. Me and my husband used to be homeless. I'm used to having to fight for everything. I come from so much hard time. I'm like finally looking for a blessing. Dino, Ebony, and Jason, your journey has been a long, incredible, exciting road. Absolutely. Yes, You've all confirmed you have the passion, the dedication, and the drive to make it in the country world. Your amateur days are long gone. So do us a big favor and swap places with us because you deserve us. to be standing here. Yeah. Thank you. I came to MasterChef to finally live, to finally do what I wanted to do, to do better for myself, to make my mother proud of me. I've come so far, and I've done so much, and we're about to find out if that paid off. We're about to find out. Oh, it's OK. One of you is about to walk away with a check for a quarter of a million dollars. And one of you is about to win the most coveted prize of all. The MasterChef Trophy and the ultimate culinary honor, the title of MasterChef. America's next MasterChef is... Congratulations! Dino for sure, come on. He popped on in the finals. <sighs> Dino! Yes! Finally! Finally, oh finally, I get my winner! First time in eight seasons, I get my winner! Oh my God. Yeah! Yeah! I get my winner to win! Oh, come on. Oh, I'm just kidding. It was also Christine oh, and Luca. Oh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Oh, 
god! I am the next master chef! Mommy, I said it! Mother! I said it, Ma! Jesus! This is the biggest moment of my life. My whole life was built for this for this idea. Right here. Do you say goodnight to this? Way to go, son. I love you. Oh my god, I'm so proud of you. I'm very proud of, of everything I accomplished tonight. And I know my mother's proud of me. I can't believe it. That's the all I really want. Flavored elevator to me. without a service Party, mommy. Happy for Dino. I'm Leslie proud of Davis. Jason, myself. I just want my time yet. I'm still gonna pursue my food dream. This ain't the last of me. Dino, baby no! I'm so proud of you. Thank you for cheering me on this entire time. I'm so happy for you. I love you. I love you too. To make it this far in the finale and to cook for the judges and to make so many friends, I am just over the moon. I feel like I won too. Okay. This right here is my ticket to the beginning of my life. For the last 28 years, I've been trying to figure out who I am. And now I'm finally awake and I'm finally getting to go out there and be that positive light that I was born to be. Ladies and gentlemen, America's next master chef, Dino! Oh, he did it again! He said it again! I heard it. Dino! 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 Okay, that was actually pretty good. I enjoyed that. But anyway.